Let's uh, turn to our foreign affairs editor, Tim Marshall, uh, who's here with us now. Um, you know, Tim, I've just had a chance to look through some of these headlines, but some of them look pretty exciting to me. It's, it's dynamite. We said on Thursday night we were expecting diplomatic dynamite. It's exactly what we've got. Uh, there's no question it's deeply damaging for the Americans uh, and other countries. It will create a degree of instability in many, many parts of the world. Uh, that's not to say the rights and the wrongs of releasing it. That's just what I'm thinking is the effect. I mean, th we're going to have 30 examples by the end of the evening. I've picked out just three. Yemen. It's clear. We, we always knew that the Americans were doing the bombing, the airstrikes in Yemen, but it's vitally important for America uh, not to be seen to be doing the bombing, that it has to be the Yemeni's air, air force carrying out airstrikes against al-Qaeda and, and other actors in Yemen, because if the Americans are seen to be having a military presence, it could spark massive unrest and the whole of Yemen could go up in flames. Well, it's quite clear from the cables if they are what they say they are. Uh, in fact, they're joking about it, the American ambassador and the foreign minister of, of Yemen. They're joking that, yeah, we, you know, we'll have to keep pretending that it's us bombing when we know it's you. Uh, and the foreign, minister, the foreign minister, I think, says, yes, we'll have to keep lying to parliament, the Yemeni parliament. That's explosive stuff in Yemen. Saudi Arabia clearly want an airstrike on Iran. Now, we've known for years that some of the Gulf states actually do want the Americans to strike Iran. They can't say so publicly, and the Arab masses may not like that at all. That's going to be quite a degree of instability for the people. When people know, when, they're, when they've proved that they're being lied to, it's a different thing to thinking they're being lied to. And this is, looks like evidence. And the last one uh, I've come up with is uh, Guantanamo Bay. American politics, uh, as you know from being a former correspondent in Washington, if Senator A wa wants to have his vote for Project B through the Senate, uh, people are quite happy to say, well, actually, yeah, if, if, you, if you do that, we're happy to fund this road that goes through your state. I mean, it's just the way American politics works. Well, it appears that's the way American foreign policy works as well. Uh, when they're trying to get Guantanamo Bay emptied, allegedly, according to the cables, Slovenia was told, you've got to take one of these Guantanamo Bay people if you ever want to meet President Obama. A little island called Kiribati was offered incentives worth millions of dollars if you take a group of these people from Guantanamo Bay. So laid naked for the world to see the way that the diplomacy has been managed, it's extraordinarily damaging. And, and, and it's this, this, the persistence of this notion about America uh, that whether it's at company commander level in Iraq or all the up sort of political nation states, that handing over money helps change people's minds. Well, it does. Uh, just that you can't be seen to be handing over money, and they are now being seen to hand, hand, hand over fist. But also that America as a force for good in the world, and you can make a very strong argument for that, or if you're anti-American, you can make a very strong argument against America being a force of good for the world. But all this, of course, will be taken by people that do not think it's a force of good and, to, and say, look how they behave in private. Now, you can make the argument about whether the means justifies the ends or the ends justify the means, but uh, it, it's a, a pretty uncomfortable few days coming up for the USA diplomats. Indeed.